Hi guys, welcome back to Sura TV. I'm Ratha Akpata, your usual host. So today we're going to be talking about retirement planning. Um, it's actually quite a pertinent one that I would like us to really tap into because I've been having a lot of conversations as well um, around it. You know, even my brother was just talking to me about it the other day and saying, you know, Sandu, I feel like we don't really plan for retirement. You know, we're not only talking many ways, we're talking general retirement planning and how, in fact, people post-retirement are depressed because there was just no plan in place. And this is not financial only. So today we're going to tap into that. We're going to talk about the money aspect of it as well as talk about the plan. You know, um, what are you going to be doing when you actually retire? But first, let's talk about what retirement planning is. I'm actually going to just read it here from empower.com currency life, um, a definition that they put online on what retirement planning is. What is retirement planning? It says retirement planning Retirement financial planning is the process of determining how much money you need to live your desired life style when you retire and then devising a long-term plan to make sure you accumulate the sum before the retirement plan. That's the retirement financial planning. So my definition of retirement planning is, um, you know, planning on what you are going to do post retirement you know um, not only financial what are you going to do with your life what are you going to do with yourself where are you going to live um, you know the kind of lifestyle that you're going to have although yes a lot of it revolves around money but it's not only that what are you going to do with yourself that's what I want us to discuss today and why is it important to have a retirement plan it's super super important because you're not going to work forever you see and not only are you not going to work forever you're not even let's say you're running, you're running your business, you're not going to always have the energy to be running that business forever. There's going to be a certain age that you reach and you're not going to be able to um, you know, put in the same amount of work as you did in your 30s or your 40s. All right. So what are the basically um, the, the steps to take for you to plan for your retirement? First, we're going to start with the financial aspect of it all right but i always say before we start with the financial aspect of the retirement plan let's talk about what you envision your life to be post retirement okay first at what age would you want to retire i feel this should be a choice although um you know the the working environment or the working class or the corporates have set a time which is like i think between 60 and 65 for you to retire but this can still be a choice depending on how you have organized your life and how you've organized your finances. You can actually retire at 45 or leave work at 45 and actually pursue other things, um, you know, part, partially where you're working, partially and you're, you're able to holiday. It's, in, it's entirely on how you want to plan your life. But first, I would like to just introduce to you that, you know, I think it's best first you, you write down exactly how your retirement looks like. What age is that? How would you? How much would you want in your bank? What type of lifestyle would you want to have when you retire? You know, would you want to holiday a lot? Would you want to be able to still be living in the city if you're living in the city? Or do you want to actually live in the village? Or what do you want to do? How does your retirement look like? Would you want to have to easy, have easy access to shops, easy access to hospitals, you know, whatever, because obviously you're reaching a certain age where probably you might need to be visiting the doctor more often or whatever. So those are the things that I think you might want to, you know, consider. In other countries, actually, people plan their retirement around an old age home. I would like, for example, uh, a person would say, I would like to go to an old age home in Australia. And this person lives in the UK, you know, or this person lives in Kenya. But they're saying, you know what, I'm going to start paying for this particular retirement home in Australia. And they start, they start actually making arrangement arrangements to find a way how to retire in that retirement home, the visa issues, you know, and all that nitty gritties if you'd want to do that, you know. Know. So those are the things that I would advise and, and encourage you to do. Start writing down. doesn't matter what age you are, even when you're 24, even when you're 30. Start actually start imagining what, okay, this is how my retirement 
looks like and this is how I would like it to be. Then you're yeah, yeah, able to plan now accordingly um, to, you know, align it to the vision that you would like to have. It's, it's been when you're working, even in your business or whatever side houses that you might, you know, create, you are creating this to have the lifestyle that you would like to have post-retirement. But I think it's very imperative that just because you know, you're going to have a certain lifestyle post-retirement does not mean that you should only wait for retirement to start actually living the life that you desire. Uh, it's, 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 it's imperative that we communicate and I would like to start changing the narrative that retirement means stop working. Retirement means now you can start living your life. You need to start living your life now. Even the way that you align your money, your life, your, you align your life, start living your life. Save up for those holidays. Say, you know, start, start those businesses that you would like to start now. You know, even as you are working, although I know corporate doesn't necessarily give you even room for you to create your own business, but you can. You can find a way to create your own business on the side, your own passion project on the side. Don't wait till post-retirement um, for you to have that passion or push that passion or whatever that you can actually have it co-currently with where you're working. Now, let's start planning the nitty-gritty. You've written your, your, your goals down. How are you going to achieve those goals all right the very first thing most most goals normally revolve money there is no way you will be able to live um, a, a fulfilled or even comfortable life post-retirement without money or consistent money um, I think what is to consider as well is um, you know when you retire you, you, you let's say right now you're earning 50,000 or 30,000 per month for instance when you retire would you want to maintain the same lifestyle that you're having? Same, you know, in terms of where you're living, you know, go the holidays or whatever. If you'd like to maintain that, some, that means you're going to have to maintain the same kind of income at the time that you have retired. How can you create that for yourself? Let's get into that um, nitty gritty. How can you create that? You ensure that you still maintain the type of lifestyle or even better, if anything, type of lifestyle that you don't struggle. All right. First, you're going to need to have what you call a pension plan. Okay, now what is a pension plan? But basically, a pension plan is where you are contributing towards a fund so that you can have some sort of income. You can have an income pension post when you have actually retired. But now that pension normally is not even does not even come close to the amount you are currently earning now. So then how do we make sure that at least uh, because now if, if, if it's not the, the amount is not matching the amount that you are currently earning now, that means your lifestyle is going to have to change. And it's and the change will actually be more less than more, and that's not necessarily the ideal situation in my in my view. I like to believe you'd like to live even a more fulfilled, not necessarily having to compromise too much. You know, as much as compromise is good. So now. How can you make sure that at least you're still earning, you know, a, a substantial amount that is can maintain you the lifestyle you want? If you want to go to Italy, you can just decide, you know what? I'm going to go to Italy for a week with a friend and you need to be able to afford that, right? How can you do that? You will not, I don't think you will necessarily be able to do that with pension only. All right. So pension is when you are contributing and I need to explain this fully. Actually, you're contributing a certain amount towards your pension so that you can earn um, a pension at the end of your retire at, at the beginning of your retirement or in, at the end of your employment, right? Normally, most companies have a pension plan in place, but some don't. Now, if you are working for a company that does not offer a pension fund or a pension plan for you guys to contribute towards, you can create one for yourself. It's very, very imperative that you create one for yourself. And how do you create one for yourself? You can actually... Um, Open a retirement annuity with any of the asset management companies or Alexander Forbes or, you know, or the insurance companies to for you to actually open a retirement annuity for yourself so that you then what they then do, they take an amount monthly so that you can actually then they will calculate how much would you need? You know, there's 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 um a package that you also take. Maybe you need a million when you retire, or five hundred thousand when you retire, and then there's um, the amount that you will earn. So they will start calculating that for you, depending on how much you would want um, if you actually visit any of them. So I would advise that you you go to any of these asset management companies, go to Alexander Forbes, Aon also all offers that and just go and have a conversation with them so that you can open your own retirement um, plan, annuity plan, okay? 
Now, um, once you've done that, um, let's say maybe I must mention also, let's say maybe you are working, right? And you have a pension plan in place um, with, with that particular organization that you're working for. It's okay to also open another one for yourself just to have, why not? To have two different or even three different income streams that you know coming from the different pension um, funds why not why can't why 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 wouldn't you not do that another way also to complement your pension is to make investments okay when i meant investments i meant you investing your money into income generating assets okay now what are those income generating assets how can you what do you mean Lorato, by that For, by that i mean many options that you can have the first you can actually invest your money with asset um asset management companies where they invest your money in compound interest bearing accounts okay where they will invest your money and then you are able to actually have that money remain invested and then you start earning the interest but this only happens when you invest that money for a longer period of time so the sooner you start uh, prioritizing that type of investment the better so that when you are actually retired you are able to start earning that money because i would say give it 10 years and above for you to start earning that type of actually um, consistent in, in where you are earning the interest and the money remains in um, remains invested it's called compound investment interest um, bearing um, accounts also what i will also encourage is that please buy shares guys just be in the in the in the habit of buying shares have a habit of just investing your money go and buy shares um you know i remember one time we had a conversation if you should look at the videos that we've recorded before we have had conversations with you know Botswana stock exchange and representatives even um, brokers you know the brokers that actually help you to invest money into the stock exchange i've had conversations with them and one of them i remember them advising that you know if you don't know where to start in terms of buying shares or where to buy to buy shares in Botswana, you have to visit some of the stock brokers in Botswana, which is Botswana Stock Brokers, Imara, as well as Mutsundi Securities. So those are the guys to actually visit for you to invest money into the stock exchange. Where do you start when you want to actually invest? You know, which company for you to choose? You know, I remember one of the, the brokers, the, the, the guys that I was interviewing at the Imara, um, you know, brokers, they were saying, possibly start investing just start off by investing in a company that you use you spend your most of your money in and that is obviously if that company is doing well financially you ask for the financials of that particular business is this business profitable has it been profitable for a couple of years do they pay how often do they pay their dividends etc you know you, you need to know those things what are the tax implications of the dividends you know you need to get your what are dividends okay let me explain what dividends are when you've bought shares in a business uh, let's say maybe you buy shares in a particular company and that company should first be listed in a stock exchange okay so when they have listed on the stock exchange what they're saying is we need funds from the public for us to continue running a part of our business so we need so they will then what you call list and issue shares for the public so then you can then buy shares in a part of that uh, company so this particular you know, um, lady then was advising that why don't you then start off by buying shares in a company that you are already putting your money in, provided that obviously that company is also doing well financially and they pay dividends, um, you know, well, and they just no issues. They've not had issues financially in the past. So, um, and how often do they, you know, you look at those trends, how often do they have financial issues or whatever, you know, just look at those trends and how they're performing. So, buy buy shares in a company that you already put your money in you know what is that company maybe you are, you know you buy from a certain grocery store a lot of times and it's a listed company why don't you then buy shares there so as you are busy buying groceries at least you know that this money is coming back to you through dividends isn't it or maybe a certain bank that you actually use and it's listed in the stock exchange why don't you buy shares there they're already taking your money anyway and you're putting money in there they're making money from you Ryan, I be a part of that company and make money from you, you know, <laughs> why not? You know, so it's, 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 that's how first to look at it. You can also not necessarily only invest in the local stock exchanges. You can invest in international stock exchanges. I know the broker 
the stockbroker that can help us that locally is Imara that can actually help you access international stock exchanges. What they advised is possibly have a budget of about 50,000 Bula and above if you want to um, invest in, in an international um, stock exchange. But otherwise, local stock exchanges, you don't necessarily need that a lot of money. Probably even, even a thousand going up, just, you know, try, go ahead and buy some shares. Keep increasing your investments, okay? Now, the higher your income goes, don't increase your expenses, increase your investments. So that, that's how you basically create, um, you know, the income for yourself through investing. And um, so that with post-retirement, you have these different streams of income coming in and you can live the comfortable life that you desire another way um, of also making investments you can get property as well you can get into property this is investment property investment property means you are buying this property for you to get a return from it. basically get consistent rental from it and it's imperative that you know your market understand your market in Botswana what sells you know what kind of property can you get into that actually goes easily i i, I my, with my experience is definitely you know not necessarily the big houses but the two one to two bedroom houses you know um, apartments or units those one to two bedroom those sell really fast today you have a tenant tomorrow the tenant is you get a tenant tomorrow literally or you you can even have very long term um lease agreements because those are affordable and that is you know the market here the middle class actually this is what they can afford here so those are what you can actually invest in you don't necessarily have to invest in property in this country only you can also find out where how other countries can you can also invest in property you can find out if you can buy a beach flat in Cape Town find out about that and you can Airbnb it and, and whatever so but it what is important is create those streams of income for yourself post retirement so that you can live your dream retirement I did mention that it's it's very imperative that you know we create our own retirement plan for ourselves and who you are the financial part is very imperative i've already shared out the ways that you can create the financial part of it now but how can you make yourself comfortable besides um the financial aspect of it what are you going to do with yourself this is the most important part that i would like us to speak about what are you going to do with yourself post-retirement you know um you you, you work in corporate 65 is, is the retirement age or 60 or 55 is the retirement age do you have a plan on what you're going to do for yourself how can you make sure that you don't end up being because what ends up happening according to my experience and what i have seen what happens to people when they actually retire is that they then don't have any plan in terms of what they're going to do with themselves then what what happens they end up getting sicker quickly because a human being is meant to be productive. A human being is meant to be learning, to be doing something. So the narrative, I would like us to change the narrative of retirement means doing nothing. No, it means, you know, you can actually retire into something else. You know, you can retire into your business that you had started while you were working. You know, if you are running your own business, you don't have to retire at 65. You know, you can still continue working until 80 if you want or until 70 if you want. But, you know, you have an option of just keep coming back and just make yourself useful. What are you going to do with yourself post-retirement? Are you going to volunteer teaching, lecturing or whatever? You know, the, but there should be a plan in place in what you're going to do with yourself. This is why... It, People actually even deteriorate faster, you know, dementia, Alzheimer's, as well as, you know, getting frustrated with yourself and end up even, I feel, sometimes I feel like this is why people die quicker as well, because they really are doing nothing with themselves. In our country, what is common is when a person retires, they go to the cattle farm the cattle post or they you know buy you know they go to the that village the home village build a nice house there you know big humongous house and then they retire there and you find themselves in a big house really depressed they don't even necessarily like farming but they had a farm and then there's some count because it's the culture here you know so i would just really like to change the narrative and say who are you and how would you like to retire you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a bigger house. It can just be a, a small house. You don't have to retire to your village. You can retire in Raboroni if you want so that you can have access to the amenities such as the hospital or even be near your children in case you need help. Also, 
what we have experience with with my mother is um you know she never wanted to leave her house but she needed help because she got sick quicker than within her 60s you know um so she needed support immediately so in most of the time if we took her to our own houses she really didn't like it and she felt very uncomfortable and i feel like that's exactly how we are going to feel when we retire so what i would advise you to do is have a plan in place as who's going to take care of you when you retire when you get to a when you've retired and you've got into a point where you can take care of yourself who is going to take care of you? That requires money, but you need a plan in place. Um, in like I said, in other countries, people plan to retire into old age homes. What we did for my mom is we brought the old age home to her house. You see, we we got a we got her a nurse, a living nurse that would live with her and cook for her a good diet. We even I think we even got her trained on how to cook a proper you know meal for an elderly person. We changed her home into an elderly person's home. Her bathroom was changed around so that she can now function like an elderly person but she's in her home and that made her feel very comfortable because she's in her pride and joy the home that she built you see so those are the things i would really like to challenge you to think to really rethink retirement where am i going to live what hobbies am i going to do what am i going to do with myself you know although most of it does require the money we've already talked about the money but what are you going to do with yourself now, another thing to consider is your medical bills. Of course, um, in, in our country, we work with medical aid. You have to make sure that you maintain your medical aid, even sometimes get a, even a, a, a much more bigger package so that it can accommodate your medical bills in case now there's more demand for medical attention um, than before you retired. So that's another thing that you're going to need to find a way to maintain your 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 medical um your medical aid how is it gonna continue being um you know um, being paid for so that you can own so this is how it can continue being paid for so that by ensuring that you have those retirement funds in place the retirement plan uh, pension fund in place that you are contributing towards having those investments in place that you are contributing towards now I want to talk specifically to the entrepreneurs as well the freelancers you know guys if you don't have a, a pension plan in place this is what you do you can create it for yourself i did mention it earlier please visit any of the asset management companies and tell them you want to create a retirement annuity plan for yourself they will tell you this is what we have and this is how much you can pay towards it so when you retire this age this is how much you can actually earn for that age okay please guys it's so imperative we don't have to die broke we don't have to retire broke you know you don't have to live in, a, in an uncomfortable life because you didn't plan properly for it all it requires is planning all it requires um it's it's, it's a proper attention to detail of who you are what what resonates with you in terms of retirement you know, um, and what do you want to do? Because not everybody is into farming. Not everybody is into, you know, going to the village. You don't have to do what everybody else does, you know, and how much money will I need for this lifestyle that I want to, you know, maintain. You don't have to, you know, be the old person of the, <laughs> of the village and just, no, you don't have to do that. Just do what, um, you know, resonates with you. Maybe you want to travel the world, like I said. Maybe you want to go be able to go to Cape Town for a week to your beach house you can start working for those things now and actually invest towards them all right so I think that is basically what um, I, I, I would advise um, you know choose the best savings plan for you for the retirement which is the pension plans for you that is what is important I just wanted to check if everything is automating them now if you are going to choose the 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 the, the, the retirement fund for yourself or whichever ensure that you are automating it like for example if it's a thousand a month to, to contribute it automate it to make sure that it automatically goes there so that you don't forget to pay for it at any time all right you know um it's it's actually going to be one of the best stages in your life so you'd want to also be able to you know have plans around it and just gives you that peace of mind right and also what we've realized is with this generation that we have of our children we, we i would like us to encourage that we don't burden them too much financially at the time of retirement so that we need to start so that means we need to start planning now 
for our financial plan as well, not burden them too much in terms of what are we going to do with ourselves. Start having those plans for yourself and actually communicate with your children. For guys, this is the plan. I would like the retirement home to come to me or I'd like to go to a retirement home there and I'm already paying for it. This is what's going to happen. And what is very, very important as well, don't forget to write a will um, uh, for when you, you know you end up dying. What do you, How would you like your funeral to be? You can write down all those things down so that you, know, you start planning for those times when they come. All right. Also, talk to your children. Communicate with your children what the plan is. What do you get? What, what do you want? In case you reach a point where you're not able to talk for yourself, like what, what happened to my mother, but she wrote down everything. So we knew exactly. She even wrote it. She even wrote her speech for us to read to the people as that at her funeral. So you can go down to that detail. Write down in your will you would like to be, whether you want to get cremated or not. Tell your children you'd like to be cremated, you know, communicate. Because with my mom, she told her friends, she told us, she told everybody. So there was no way we could have not have cremated her because she told, even her, when she died, that no, her friends, her, her cousins were calling us, like, days, no, your mom has to be cremated. So those are the things that it's, it's imperative to, to communicate um, what your wishes are posed when you die. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please put them on the comments below. And bye for now. I hope this was helpful for you.